Hey everyone, it's Denise here, NOLA Collectibles, and welcome to my channel. I'm here today, I'm going to do something a little bit different rather than an unboxing or an educational video. I'm gonna do a little bit of a collection share and also talk about my best thrifted finds of this past year. So I actually had started reselling um, probably in April or May of last year. So I'm just upon my year anniversary. And so I wanted to go through kind of like what were the best finds and what did I pick up that had the best and the highest values and what were some surprises and, and just go through since we're unable to thrift right now, uh, what was exciting about the finds that I did locate and, and, and picked up and and go through some of those uh, awesome items so I can share with you uh, my finds from the year. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Denise, this is kind of like what I do. I don't do uh, on unboxings, on jarrings, I do haul shares, educational videos, all about jewelry. I'm a part-time reseller, I have a full-time job and I do this kind of like for fun, but also to make a little bit of extra money. So I'm gonna get right into it. That was a long ass intro. Let's get right into it. So I'm trying to think, um, I'm gonna start with some of the items I picked up early, early in the process. So some of my earliest, um, when I first started kind of like getting into this finds, um, were these two items right here. So um, close to my house, there was an estate sale. I live in a community that is um, very mid-century modern. There's a lot of original owners here. And unfortunately, they're quite frankly, like in their 70s and 80s, and a lot of them are passing away. So there's a lot of estate sales and garage sales that are going on here. So there was an estate sale not too far from my house, and I went and it was the most amazing estate sale. And so they had this big kind of like bin of just like jewelry and everything was marked a dollar and two dollars. And so these two items were in there um, and these actually, I was like, whoa, pick these up immediately. So this is like a vintage lapis lazuli 18 karat gold necklace that I picked up for $2. And this is also like a little vintage um, lapis lazuli. This one's 14 karat gold. This one was 18 karat gold. Um, and so, you know, this one you kind of see during the 80s quite a bit. This one's a little bit older. It's hand knotted. But again, these were both beautiful finds, um, literally like $2 and a dollar. Um, it was the most amazing estate sale that I probably have ever been to. These people had massive amounts of stuff and you could just see um, how beautiful and large. These are like 10 to 12 millimeter lapis lazuli, just gorgeous, nice, heavy barrel clasp on this. And so this one, unfortunately, I love lapis lazuli and sodalite. I love blues. So this was something that immediately went into my personal collection. And at that same estate sale, I actually also picked up a, um, a Baccarat um, cross, a Baccarat glass cross. It was green and I, I paid a dollar for it. And I ended up selling that for about $100. So like I said, this was like the most epic estate sale. Um, super, super amazing. And I, I just found some really great uh, pieces and these were like the highlights. I still treasure these. I love these so much. Um, and I'm just you know, like I said, I went back to the sale like three times because I really couldn't even believe what they were selling there um, and what was available. So I got, you know, those antique um, and vintage lapis lazuli pieces and they literally cost me a few dollars. Um, I'm trying to think like where I want to go next. I think I'm going to go right here. So this was a piece again early in when I was starting my thrifting locally here. And this is from my local thrift store. And this is a vintage molded glass Florenza piece. So, you know, Florenza is um, was a jewelry line started in 1937 by Dan Kossoff, and it was very inspired about Victorian um, Renaissance type, types of jewelry looks. So beautiful molded glass, beautiful Aurora, Aurora Borealis. And so I saw this, this was hanging um, in the jewelry section, uh, which is like, they don't even keep it behind the shelf or anything it's like open and free to the public to rummage through and i saw this and this one sold was uh selling for 3.99 so i picked this up and you could see it's it's marked with florenza um right here throughout it's beautiful hook clasp closure and i'm such a sucker i love molded glass pieces and florenza is just gorgeous high quality beautifully made jewelry and so this 
<clears throat> it was one of the first pieces I picked up that I had thrifted um, for $3.99. So again, just gorgeous. And I still, I love this piece. I treasure it. I don't think I can get rid of it. Maybe one day I'll sell it. It'll be a catch and release. Um, but I still kind of like want to enjoy it. And I, like I said, it was one of the first pieces that I thrifted that was a value and high quality that I, I really just love and treasure so much. So vintage Florenza piece. Um, I love that piece so much. Uh, another early thrift uh, pickup of mine is this ring right here. And so I got this out of a local, um, my th local thrift store. Uh, they sell jewelry bags for $40. There was a time where I was picking them up for $20 on half price day. And so this was a, a half price pickup um, from the local thrift store in their jewelry bag. So this was in there and it's so heavy. Um, and you can see it's kind of like this white gold braided style. And so um, I knew immediately that this was something that was high quality, um, high value kind of item. And so I saved this and I took this to my local jewelry. Um, jeweler, I didn't even have, I, th I think, a metal testing kit at the time. So, but I just knew that this was a high quality item. So I took it to my local jeweler who verified that this was platinum and that those were diamonds. And so, you know, a little less than a quarter of a carat of diamonds. And so, um, again, so this came out of my local thrift store bag. Um, it was $20, it's half price. And so this, again, an early kind of like get, an early win for me. Um, just a gorgeous piece of jewelry that I love. Um, and so I've kept it. <laughs> again, I don't think it's something that I'm going to be reselling, but, I, I, you know, it's just a very kind of like that David Yurman style. It's just like, you know, kind of heavy, but also neutral, not too ostentatious. I just... I don't know I just love it so much and I again it's a very high quality well-made piece of jewelry so this was a great early get for me when I first started getting into purchasing thrift store items and resale and whatnot and thrifting here locally so you can tell I had some early wins and this is clearly what like sparked the bug in me um, to really get into uh, what I do so what I'm doing now so I was like, you get a high off of some of these items, you truly do. And so, you know, this is what kind of keeps you going. You wanna find that treasure. Uh, you know, it's all about scoring those beautiful items um, that are high value and, and just like that you don't normally have access to. And so this is what it's all about, guys. So again, this is another item. This is a, a vintage uh, Givenchy necklace and I've actually, I've come across a few Givenchy necklaces. I recently sold one for $165, which was the more classic um, double G logo gold tone, super 70s heyday, um, early 80s heyday of Givenchy style jewelry. And so I recently sold that one, which was a great sale. And it was like, you know, hurt for me to let go because I actually, I paid $8 for the double G necklace double G logo necklace. I got it in a state sale here locally from a very prominent um, and wealthy estate. And so similarly, this came from, again, my thrift store and this dude was $6.99. And again, this is just kind of like that beautiful, very traditional Givenchy look, heavy, um, you know, heavy, well-made, substantial. This is a statement piece of jewelry. And, um, you know, these items, when I come across them, this one, again, came from the local thrift store. And it, just like the Florenza piece, this dude was on shelf. So available to anyone. It was not behind um, the glass or anything like that. And I saw it and I was like, you, you have to, like, compose yourself for a minute because you're just, like, in disbelief that you're like, am I really is this really here? Am I really finding this? And then you just snatch that up and take it to the counter and run. Like I literally went straight to the counter <laughs> and, and paid for it. Cause again, you're like in a little bit of a state of disbelief when you find these types of things. So, um, someone on eBay currently has this necklace listed for an obscene amount of money. I think something like $800. I don't think this necklace is worth $800. I've been watching that auction to see if it's going to actually sell. Um, it's not an auction to buy it now, but I, you know, I think something like this is probably worth more about like $200. But again, it's a beautiful piece of jewelry. It is a statement. It is classic Givenchy. 
And so um, I did want to share that piece with you as something that was like a thrift win for me early when I first started doing all of this. So got a bit of some goodies, right? Like we've been through a couple of goodies here. I'm trying to think, okay, this one is another early win. So again, this came from my local thrift store. This was one of my thrift store jewelry bags, the $40 bags. I remember I picked this up and I just saw these dudes in there. And I knew immediately that these were rolled. Um, so yeah, so these are really beautiful, like geometric um, triangle with a freshwater pearl um, detail there. They're 14 karat gold. They're pretty substantial. And again, this these dudes came out of a $40 jewelry bag from my local thrift store. And they're, they're very cool. I thought they were very different. Nice quality, that's my cat Luna. She's coming to check stuff out. Um, and these I currently, I think I have listed for 225. And so nice quality there. Uh, nice find, you know, definitely a, a nice surprise in the bag. And like I said, I saw one of them and I just, I just knew immediately through the bag uh, that this dude, these guys wore gold and, and, and that they would likely be worth a lot of money. So. Beautiful 14 karat gold earrings with a freshwater pearl detail. Um, definitely, I would suspect these to be from the 80s, just given the kind of like geometric shape of them and, and the motif of what they look like. So again, these were like a very early thrifted find of mine that came from my local um, thrift store. And so I have those. Those were great. Those I actually do have up for sale. Those are, I think, like I said, $225 or best offer. Um, let me think where to go next. Um, I'm going to go right here. So I had picked these up. This came out of a um, shop Goodwill bag. And these are 14 karat gold uh, diamond earrings. And um, these were at the bottom of the bag. This is why I love the bottom of the bag. They're about a half carat each. And um, the bottom of the bag always has goodies. And they were filthy. They were absolutely filthy. So the diamonds were very dull. The gold was very dull. There was all kinds of like schmutz on them, but I was like, wait a tick. What are these dudes? So one way when you're looking at gold to determine if you're looking at something that truly is gold is to look at the post. Um, and you can see here, the post is also gold colored. So when you're picking through like items, I'm sorry, my cat's so chatty. She's looking at squirrels and birds in the backyard. Luna. What's going on? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> She's very chatty. <laughs> um, yeah, it's to look at the post. So if the post is looks like it's gold, um, chances are you may be dealing with a gold item. Usually with lower priced items, you'll see that the post is stainless steel or it's made out of some kind of base metal. So that to me was like the first indication that I might be dealing with something that was better quality. Um, when I took out my loop and I looked at them on closer inspection, I saw that there was a 750 mark, um, not only on the back, but on the post itself. You have to um, look on the post and it's so teeny tiny, you need a really high magnification loop to see it. But the metal purity will oftentimes be on the post itself. Um, so those are the places to look if you feel like you might have something um, that might be of good value or might be of gold. And so, like I said, these are really nice and it being really nice, high quality diamonds. Uh, there are no inclusions in them. Yeah, and they're just really beautiful. I've actually, I've never um, purchased diamond studs for myself. I don't know why. I, I mean, they're very expensive, you know. So, um, you know, that's a purchase that you're going to have to make an investment in. You know, you're going to be prepared to pay up. Um, so I was really thrilled to find these. And these came out of a Shop Goodwill um, jewelry bag. So a pair of beautiful diamond stud earrings, total of one carat worth of diamonds and 14 karat gold. Um, just really beautiful. So these were a really thrilling find for me. I still love them. I wear them regularly. Um, you really can't be beat like a versatile diamond stud earring. It's classic. It's timeless. It will never go out of style. So yeah, that was really thrilling for me. Um, you guys were with me when I found this one and I just wanted to add this. Um, I do find a lot of Native American jewelry in a lot of my local thrift store bags. And I found this dude in there. And this is like a Zuni 
style petite point um, turquoise ring. So it has a, like uh, the bezel on the turquoise is called micro sawtooth um, because it looks like a tiny little sawtooth um, design. So you can see this dude is quite substantial. He's very large and you know, I, I do love turquoise. Um, I, I really do. I think it's beautiful jewelry. When I was younger, I didn't appreciate it so much. Now that I've gotten a little bit older, I, I do love turquoise. And I don't know if I told you the turquoise is, um, is something that's typically associated with quote unquote, like wise women, like there's wise women are the women who wear tur turquoise. So I think that makes much sense that um, the older that you get, that the more interested in turquoise you might become. So um, this was a really beautiful, came out of a th local thrift store bag. Um, it was $40 for the bag and it's a very substantial set in sterling silver and it's just, it's just beautiful. Um, I love it. I wear it regularly. I, um, I just think it's just gorgeous. So I, I'm a huge fan of this piece of jewelry. And again, this came out of my local thrift store bag and, and was really exciting when I, I did find it. And so I have found, like I mentioned, I found, um, quite a bit of Native American jewelry in my local thrift store bags, um, in Louisiana next to Texas. And so that's the style in Texas, you know, crosses over. People are into it and they go and they're in Texas and then they come over to Louisiana and it ends up at thrift stores. So in addition to this, I'm going to flash on the screen. Um, I had also found very, very early on in this process, process um, Navajo bench beads. So bench beads are handmade, sometimes they're called Navajo pearls, a handmade sterling silver necklace. And it was almost over a hundred, I think almost a hundred grams of sterling silver handmade. And what made it even more unique is with bench beads, they're not typically signed. These were signed by the Navajo who made the um, the necklace. So uh, and it was on a chain. So just beautiful. I had reached out to a jeweler in Albuquerque, New Mexico, who was able to validate for me um, the legitimacy of the item. And in fact, that they were sterling and that they were made by Navajo and that they were signed. And he was able to give me a price on them. So I think at the time he priced them, he suggested to me that I price them at $800. I think I, end, I ended up send, selling it close to about $700. Um, so again, it was a piece that came out of a local thrift store uh, jewelry bag. And I ended up just recently selling it a couple of weeks ago for about $700. So that was another great find. I wish I could have um, shared that with you guys. Um, but I'll, again, I'll flash it on the screen and show you what I'm talking about. They were truly beautiful. Um, and it was very exciting as well. It was an item I held on to for a while because I just didn't know anything about it. So I waited until, like I said, I was like, I did research on it to figure out what I was dealing with. And then I reached out to the jeweler to, um, I sent many photos and I got a verification and went through a, a jeweler to really talk about what the value was and what they exactly were. Um, so it was a, it was a really great process. And um, if you have anything of value that you're questioning, you don't know anything about, but you feel in your gut that this might be a high priced item or a high value item, um, yeah, reach out to your local jeweler or jeweler who specializes in that type of jewelry. And, um, you know, you'll be surprised to find how many people are willing to help you. Um, so this was another piece that came out of a local thrift store jewelry bag. And this one really fooled me because again, I didn't know too much about Amber. And amber is so tricky to me because it's so deceiving in that it's so lightweight and it feels like plastic. So if you're early in your, um, you know, reselling game and you're not that familiar with the way things feel, um, feeling I think is the best way to familiarize yourself with things, seeing it in person, touching it in person. So that only comes with experience. So I came across this and these are an unusual shape. So that also kind of, um, you know, deceived me into knowing what this truly was. Um, but I looked at it a little closer and I, I'm like, hey, this has inclusions in it. And um, I did some research and I found that this is, this is an amber necklace. And so varying colors of amber in a fancy cut. Um, and I think that, you know, this was something that they did, uh, they called designer amber and was uh, popular in some of the Baltic states using Baltic amber. And so, again, um, deceived me, wasn't quite sure, had to do a lot of research on it, and then I, I kind of like finally figured it out. But there aren't too many um, examples of this that I was able to find, um, but again, 
I think it's just beautiful. I love the shape of the amber here. I love amber, something that's found in nature, um, resin that's so old. Um, I mean, this is it's a piece, ends up being a piece of history, and so I I do love I love amber. I love Baltic amber. Um, I, I had to travel quite a bit for work um, a few years ago, and I found myself in Poland and Russia and. I would look at all the amber and sometimes I would purchase some of the amber so I am a big fan of it and again I had never seen this shape and amber is very deceivingly light so you pick it up it, it does feel like plastic but the difference to me when you feel amber there's like a bit of a stickiness to it it's so odd to describe it's it doesn't feel like plastic there's something that's like warm and sticky about it in your hand and if you put it in hot water, sometimes you will be able to smell what smells like pine tree coming off of it. So again, cool, super cool piece came out of a local thrift store bag. Um, really exciting for me to discover and, and super fun. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to go next. I think I'm going to go with pearls. I find a lot of pearls in my local thrift store. People mix up faux pearls and real pearls all the time if you have a section in your thrift store that has pearls i encourage you to go check it out on the regular because people are just they don't know how to differentiate real pearls versus faux pearls i can picture i can when i see pearls i kind of immediately recognize um what looks like a faux pearl versus a real pearl some of the things to look for there's a luminescence in per, real pearls that doesn't come from anything else. You can put this up against a faux pearl. The luminescence of a real pearl almost comes from within the pearl itself. I'm gonna show you this here because um, I think that this is the best example. It's just, these just, like I said, they glow. They glow because there's layers um, involved in that pearl of that coloration when it's formed um, that really is not, cannot be replicated by any kind of um, other you know, faux, faux pearl. Um, there's a feeling the way pearls feel in your hand that again, you get used to feeling what pearls weigh um, only by dealing with them. And the other things to look for, pearls are not even. This is something that's created in nature. You're not gonna find perfectly round shapes. If you look at a necklace and all of the pearls look 100% uniform and 100% round, you're likely looking at a faux pearl. So again, look at the luminescence of the pearls, consider the weight, and I do recognize glass faux pearls do feel weighty, the similar, they feel very similar to the weight of a real pearl. Um, but again, look for those different, that differentiation in the roundness. Um, also, a lot of people say this, like, you might be grossed out by this. I, I included the price to list on this one. I actually paid $2 for this. I paid half price for this. Um, and again, I saw this on the rack. I asked to see it. And I'm like, those are real pearls. And this is also a, a 14 karat gold clasp. So um, yeah, so I got a beautiful pair of real pearls with a beautiful 14 karat gold clasp closure here. And I paid $2 for these. And so um, these dudes over here, are more of like a baroque a free-form type of pearl shape but nonetheless are, are just as gorgeous and so these are beautiful pinky cream um, coloration and again similar with this they had a 14 karat gold clasp closure on these and so these I think I paid something similar um, these all under five dollars um, you know this one has a sterling silver clasp other things to look for is hand knotting if you see the knotting between the pearls also a very good indication I'm always talking about the size the uniformity the luster and the clasp to me are the giveaways of a, um, of a high quality pearl versus a faux pearl so all of these gorgeous I love them um, I don't have any of these listed yet this one still has a price tag I'm still kind of like waffling on whether or not I want to sell these or keep them for myself not quite sure but I do love them all they're gorgeous pearls I love them all um where am I gonna go next okay another shop goodwill um jewelry bag find here uh these are this is an 18 karat gold bohemian garnet uh ring I found this in the bag and I was like gobsmacked um and then I found this one in the bag and I was like, whoa, 
there's two of them. So there was two of these in one bag. And so here's the thing though, this dude, this is kind of like the style of ring is known as a princess or a dome shaped ring. You can see it's a very high setting and it kind of, um, kind of has like a pyramid shape there. Um, this dude here is missing two stones. You could see right there. And this guy here is has like is missing a ton of stones. He has the capuchon right in the middle, but he's missing a ton of stones. He's very he was very dusty. So I'm thinking I have to take this to the jeweler. I'm gonna make this dude whole, and I'm gonna do it by having my jeweler harvest the two stones um, from this guy. So I have there's varying millimeter sizes of stones in this guy that are still left. I'm gonna have him pull out the stones of here and put it into the other ring and this one is also the 14 and 18 karat gold um so i will have him pull the stones out and give me back the ring for melt value so i make sure that i'm not you know losing anything here but again th these were just beautiful and and this was the dirtiest nastiest bag you could imagine so dirty and dusty and gross and um to find these two items in there uh was really exciting for me so i love this i've always wanted a bohemian garland garnet ring I've never had one uh, I've looked at bracelets in the past so this will be it and like I said once I replace those two stones there with um, stones that look like a pretty much near perfect match in the same millimeter size I think I will have a really beautiful um, bohemian garnet ring there you can see look look how gorgeous those are They're such a rich color and just like the most beautiful setting I do love these this type of setting um, it's heavy, it's substantial. It's not really something you see every day today. So I think that will be a really lovely ring once it's made complete. So yeah, that came out of Shop Goodwill bag. Um, okay, I'm gonna go here. You guys were with me when I just, I discovered, I, should, I shouldn't say I discovered it because I didn't discover it. A, a viewer discovered it for me. I have received a thread out box. This necklace was in there. I didn't know what it was. It felt like very high quality jewelry. It's very heavy. It's very pretty. Um, and this pebbling, yes, you know, yeah, I'm like, yes, this is David Yerman style, but it didn't have any of the discernible David Yerman marks on it. I was looking for the DY. There's no DY on this. Um, what's on here is a mark that is pretty hard to decipher it just looks like a ring with like marks in it it's right there um and that apparently is also a david yerman mark so uh I, and this is the cali style uh collection i think this was from about 2012 or so a viewer recognized this as soon as i pulled it out of the bag and she was like that's david yerman and she messaged me and sent me a listing of this exact necklace so this came out of a thread up box. It was, I think, $34.99. And um, I currently have this dude listed, I think, for $600. So, um, you know, David Yerman is very expensive and very high quality, very collectible. It's a beautiful, silky wheat chain. It has this closure, which is um, very typical of David Yerman. I did see this. And, I, you know, like I said, I, I did, I associated this. I was like, oh, this is like a typical David Yerman. But, you know, some so many copies coming out of China. There's so many like copycat designers out there. I just wasn't sure. And so when she identified it exactly and shared it with me, I was like, okay, yeah. This is David Yerman. So it's reversible. It has a pebble, that pebble design on the back that David Yerman's very known for. And this is like a cute um, firefly on the front. So yeah, that came out of a thread up box, you guys. So that was super exciting. Um, again, out of my local thrift store bag, you were also with me when I found this beautiful shell cameo um, set in 18 karat gold. It does not have the pin on the back. Um, but it can also be worn as a pendant and it has beautiful little seed pearls on here. And this depicts a goddess on there. And it's beautifully carved, um, super delicate, light pink. 
Um, and this was like a beautiful bag of jewelry. It had so many high quality items in there. It was like a, a dream. I can only dream to find another bag like that. But again, this is a gorgeous, it's very large. It's very substantial. It's a very finely carved cameo. And so this was another really exciting find in a local thrift store jewelry bag. And I love it. So I don't, again, I don't think I can sell this. I love it too much. I think it's, it's going to stay mine. It's a beautiful piece of jewelry. Um, and again, out of a, a, a shop Goodwill bag, I found this vintage um, Givenchy necklace. This is a Art Deco Revival Lucite. You can see it's got this molded Lucite, um, very kind of Art Deco looking motif centerpiece. It has the double G closure right here. It's more Givenchy on the top on the bottom. And this um, dude is uh, pretty rare. Again, I, it's Art Deco Revival. I, I think this either came out in the 70s or in the 80s. Um, but again, it's a beautiful piece of jewelry. It's very distinct. Um, I love the Lucite on it. I think it's just a really good looking piece of jewelry. It's also signed Givenchy on the back there of the um, pendant. And so something like this, I think I have this listed as well. I think it's listed at like $185. Um, this is based on past sold uh, on what I found on Worth Point. So again, I, I think this is a gorgeous necklace. It is very hard to find. Um, in the 80s, uh, you, they were a little bit more common. Uh, now in 2020, you, you tend to not see this style of necklace. So I love this. Gorgeous. Uh, the bag, I think, was $20. So I definitely got my money's worth out of that bag and then some. So a beautiful Givenchy Lucite uh, Art Deco revival piece, either from the late 70s or early 80s. So that was a great find as well. So I'm trying to think where to go next. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, recently, out of another um, Goodwill bag, I think I paid just $32 was this beautiful coral necklace. And so coral, I think, tends to get by to thrift stores. Thrift store people don't know what it is. Um, there's a lot of fake sets out there. Um, this is either Japanese or Italian coral. And, and what this kind of style is known is dog bone. Because you, if you look close at it, it does kind of, they do kind of look like dog bones. So the way they string it, um, they're opposite each other, and it forms a beautiful pattern. It's heavy. Um, it's, you know, coral is porous. If you look closely at it, um, you will see variations, white, a little bit of white on the stones. You will see porosity. Um, so this was popular. I've seen Victorian examples of this. I've seen a little bit more recent examples of it. Um, highly collectible, highly valuable. I'm seeing prices anywhere between $90 and $300. So a very wide range of prices on this type of coral. But I, th I do think it's stunning uh, coral. Like I said, it's you can no longer find coral. It's not being produced anymore. Um, this is in protection of coral reefs. But uh, vintage coral, it's kind of, you know, it's a little bit similar to ivory. But, you know, coral, you can continue to resell um, and, and it's not, it's not commanding the types of prices that it was in the eighties, but still, um, a pretty high resale value on this. So this, I think is a gorgeous coral necklace. I love it. And again, I'm on the fence with this one. I don't know if I want to resell it. I love it so much. It's not something you come across every day. Um, and so I just think it's very beautiful. And that was a really thrilling and beautiful bag of, you know, in a thrift store bag. That I paid like 20 something dollars for. So I'm losing my voice, guys. So we're going on 33 minutes here. I'm going to wrap this up. And this is a jade and um, 14 karat, uh, 10 karat gold uh, bracelet that I had found in a thrift store bag. Again, I think I paid like maybe $24 for this one. And this is by a designer named Hang Nui, Hang Nui N G A I. And um, this is a brand that came out of Hong Kong, but is now here in the 80s, uh, here in the U.S., came to the U.S. in the 80s. I'm sorry, I'm like messing up all my words here. Um, this is also the same designer, and this one features a, a South Sea Pearl. This actually came out of the same bag, and so this one's 10 karat gold. This one, I believe, is 14 karat gold. Huge South Sea Pearl, um, cultured pearl right there, just gorgeous. 
same designer this one also has diamond chips on it beautiful diamond accent um so these were, came out of the same bag and so um you know this is a style that's very traditional this jade with the um, gold stations in between it's got a little safety clasp on it so when i saw it i recognized this as a likely a jade and a gold bracelet i i was not familiar with the designer but um it's that it's an hg signature on it and um I think it, it was founded by um, Johnny Yao, like I said. Um, and they're most known for precious metals, fine and precious metals, jade, pearls, just really gorgeous jewelry. So these, again, came out of the same bag, and these are just beautiful. I haven't gotten around to listing it. Um, I love the South Sea Pearl. Huge. I mean, this is like a probably like a 12 millimeter South Sea Pearl Um South Sea pearls are amongst the most coveted and highly priced pearls that are available on the market. Um, we're talking, you know, like Mickey Moto as one of the finest designers and purveyors of South Sea Akoya pearls. So that was very exciting as well. And again, I don't know if I'm likely going to list these pieces. I haven't done it yet. Um, I will eventually. I'm a weirdo. I like hold on to them and I wait. And when the feeling strikes me and I feel as natural, I go and I list them. So anyway, guys, I think that's really what I have for you. Some of my top thrift store, um, shop Goodwill, Goodwill store finds um, for the year. There was uh, so many varied pieces, even like garage selling, estate selling um, that I shared with you. This Florenza, the Cameo, the Amber, the Coral, this Lapis, beautiful Lapis, Platinum, and Diamond Ring. Um, there, some Givenchy, who doesn't love some gorgeous and iconic Givenchy, um, really it's been a thrilling year and, and this is really just part of the reason why I do this. I love doing this and I will continue doing this. So I so appreciate you all being here with me. So many of you have been with me while I found, uh, some of these items. And so, uh, that's what it's all about. I appreciate you tuning in and thanks again for, um, staying with me on this Saturday. I hope you're having a fabulous weekend and I will see you on the next one. Bye.